game three between Master Ray and Nilsi. Master Ray starting in the upper right corner as the black Protoss, Darth Vader esque. Bottom left hand corner, we have Nilsi starting as the blue Protoss. This is going to be on Eclipse. It is a two player map, which I think is going to end up favoring Nilsi overall. My voice dropping again. Still doing a sick cast. Uh, I was actually just explaining this to Twitch chat. I feel, feel I still, I don't feel like I'm actively producing anything, but I still feel like I have stuff in my head. And ironically, when I when I have this, I can hit the the lower notes. I should cast deep down here, the Darth Vader style. Um, I'll avoid that. Nilsi, we already got kind of a interesting view at his style. Very creative. I almost wonder if Eclipse is going to end up favoring him because it is. It's kind of like one or the other, right? It's when you know where your opponent is. It's, I guess, the question of cheese, right? You can't two-gate on this map, I don't think, as effectively. It does have that ramp. It is a two-player map, which means Master Ray is going to be able to go ahead and scout things up. But can you use that sort of information in, to get inside your opponent's head? Scout after pylon for Master Ray, knowing Nilsi's style up to this stage. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say four-player maps are probably better for the cheese overall, though. I don't know. I'd like to hear the more skilled players' thoughts on this. Is it easier to cheese on a two- or three-player map, or is it easier to cheese on... I guess what type of cheese, right? Because that's the other factor. Because it's like some people consider a uh, 12 CC or a 12 Nexus cheese. I'm not sure I would call it cheese. It's a risky build, but I wouldn't call it cheese, per se. Master Ray, yeah, immediately getting that probe scout in. It's going to put him a little bit economically behind, but he is going to see that gateway and that assimilator warping, and the assimilator uh, warping in... Pretty rapidly. He has his own assimilator and gateway warping in. I guess he was worried. I don't know. Maybe worried about a gas deal. A um, little bit of damage there. Uh, but this is going to allow a little bit more mineral harvesting earlier because of the earlier scout for Nilsi. I don't think that's going to be game winning. But, you know, every little bit. But anyway, going back to the, the concept of cheese. I feel like on two-player maps, there's certain... Like, it's almost like you... How do I put this? On two-player maps, you know what your opponent's expecting, right? And so you can kind of use that against them in theory. But on four-player maps, it's like you're blind, so there's more area oftentimes to build the cheesy stuff. But at the same time, at least initially, for like some of the, the really fast cheesy scouts, you don't know where their base is necessarily until you run around with the scouting. So maybe it's just the type of cheese is better. It's like the type, it's like the cheddar versus the gouda versus the whatever is different from map to map. Anyway, I'll stop talking about... Oops, not what I wanted to bring up. I'll stop talking about cheese here. This is definitely one of those, like, Diggy's not feeling his best cast. No Zealot produced initially uh, for Master Ray. There is a Zealot initially produced for Nilsi. It's going to follow that up uh, with a Dragoon. That is going to... I almost feel like if you're... This is one of those maps where it's better, actually, to, to skip Zealot because of the ramp advantage and because of decent distances in between. And again, I feel like when uh, going up against your opponent who's built a zealot, um, it's up to your, especially with the pressure, it's up to your opponent to kind of mess it up. Master Ray almost sneaking behind that probe line, realizing better of it, and pushing around. So nice quick decision making there to not lose his scouting probe. Does see that cybernetics core spinning. Both players basically at a kind of a mirror build at this stage. Nilsi's probe, is he going to get out of there? I don't think so. Nice play from Master Ray. Dragoon and Zealot. On the opposite side, not quite able to kill that probe. Looks like that probe escaped. So despite the so this is kind of the funny thing. Despite that earlier scout for Master Ray, he's going to end up ahead overall. He's actually doing pretty well staying on top of his macro. 20 probes at this stage. Second gateway for Nilsi. As far as his decision of tech, we'll see if Master Ray opts for Robo or second gateway first. Looks like he is going to opt for Robotics Facility. Now, depending on how Nilsi plays this... He could end up at a serious disadvantage. So the question is, is again, what Master Ray goes to is the follow-up. If he follows up uh, with... So if Nilsi goes to gate into expand, um, that will give... And Master Ray goes into... I guess I should just let it play out and we'll talk about it from there. Because there's just all... Like, let me talk about every Protoss build there is in the interim. I like what Master Ray is doing here in the meantime with this probe scout just kind of meandering across that 12th clock. Because he knows Nilsi is such kind of a... You know, he's a... He's a player. He's got a lot of create. I'll say creative instead of cheesy. Um, he's shown two creative builds at the, at the front, so it's really giving Master Ray pause for thought. He's putting down a second gateway now after a robo, and actually a third gateway. So a little bit delayed because of the initial robo, but I believe this is going to be, yeah, just straight pressure from Master Ray. Has that observatory out just in case he's going up against DT, but this is basically go up, deny the natural expansion, or just apply pressure, apply pressure, apply pressure, and either overwhelm your opponent and kill them outright, 
uh, or get your base kind of uh, behind it to follow. Observatory is coming out first. We do see several Dragoons from Nilsi making their way across. And this actually is, might end up playing... Ex wow, he might be playing right into Master Ray's hands here. He has dropped his own robotics facility. He's going into inferior production. He's moving up into Master Ray's base right as Master Ray's going to have superior production kicking online. And is basically going to be about even numbers where Master Ray has the ramp advantage. So not only is he kind of behind in production overall... He's going to be in a situation where he lost a lot of his troops that might have provided some some time to provide a defense. And also, sometimes what you can do um, as a Protoss player is, is wander up. You can kind of see the Dragoon count and get a general idea of what you're up against. And here, actually, this is that was brilliant play from Master Ray. He just peeled four Dragoons, moved them up, which kind of gives the impression of maybe two or even one gate uh, to Nilsi. And Nilsi's going to follow it up with continuing... Putting those Dragoons out on his front. And yeah, this is unfortunate for him. The longer this goes on, the more that additional Dragoon per round of Dragoon production is going to start playing into Master Ray's advantage. Probe kind of alongside sneaking around. And I don't think Nilsi has any concept of this. He does have robotic support bay up. He is getting a shuttle and is going for a Reaver. Depending on when Master Ray pushes out and decides to kind of follow up with this, that could be... A big factor as well. Nilsi, it looks like saving up for 400 resources, perhaps? No, just going to go ahead and and get that shuttle observatory and reaver out. So there is a timing where Nilsi wins this. Master Ray now moving up. He's going to be able to microfire against these Dragoons. Actually, nice micro on Nilsi. So one Dragoon for one Dragoon. Second Dragoon picked off. He realizes he's in trouble making his way back. He's gonna This pylon at the natural expansion is going to slow Master Ray down. That might provide enough time for this Reaver to get out. If this Reaver and some Micro happen before Nilsi gets boxed into his natural expansion, that could be the difference in this fight. He does have a shuttle to get that Reaver down, and he has enough forces where it looks like he's going to pause on this... Se so, interesting. Pausing on this second kind of plateau where the rate of fire... Well, where the high ground advantage might have worked to Nilsi's in Nilsi's favor. So Master Ray holding up, getting more Dragoons. He's got a full control group now with more coming. He's plopping down a Nexus behind this. Nilsi's pro, because keep in mind, he doesn't have eyes with that Observer yet. He's going to sneak behind this. He's going to see that Nexus and know the situation he's in. That Reaver is going to be on the low ground. Nilsi's setting up to go ahead and perhaps take his natural expansion and probably can defend this with a Reaver on the ground. So the Dragoon's killing that probe, but not before it sees the Nexus. So now Nilsi knows, okay, I'm in a situation where I can defend my front, with the Reaver, he needs to continue the Reaver production, of course, get his own Nexus up, and probably be in an advantageous situation to follow things up. One one Dragoon taking a lot of damage. Fortunately, he was only on that single Dragoon, didn't get that, that follow-up splash. But Nilsi, as long as he keeps these Reavers towards the front, ooh, he needs to be careful. Yeah, here's the thing. That second Reaver's going to have to slow walk his way down here. I think Master Re realizes he's gonna, just going to have to back off. But this is going to give a, a general advantage to Nilsi in tech. Scouting advantage goes to Master Ray. He is going to get that expansion up a little bit earlier. But not so considerably where it's going to be like, okay, you, you have this big match advantage, essentially. Because keep in mind, this was a lot invested in Dragoon, not in tech, comparatively. This is also going to be 2-gate versus 4, oh, well, actually, versus 5-gate? Five 5-gate five production. And critically, also, Master Ray has... Scouting advantage. Nilsi dropping a pylon near that third just to make sure, just to see any sort of shuttle making its way in. Second observer being produced. Reavers, the advantage for Nilsi currently. Just pure raw production, the advantage for Master Ray. And Master Ray, of course, has that observer comparatively. Although that has been neutralized now that Nilsi has an observer out in the field. Nilsi deciding to engage this. Reavers out on the front. Master Ray is able to pick off one of those Reavers before it was only able to get one shot off. Some nice micro on his part. Nilsi looks like he might get overwhelmed by this Dragoon Force. Honestly, the Reaver towards the north. Master Ray engaging from kind of a two-pronged direction from north and south. Picks off the shuttle and the Reaver. And now Nilsi trying to micro his way and draw the Dragoon Count to the north. This is where, yeah, having that additional gateway and all of that production playing out for Nilsi. Driving them away from the Nexus. Master Ray peeling off some of the Dragoons. Actually might even be able to dive and take out that Nexus. Nice micro from Nilsi, actually going using the high ground advantage. So now Master Ray, kind of caught a little bit in between, has a lot of Dragoons, has to worry about that attack force from the north, perhaps pincering his attack force in. Nilsi starting to saturate his natural expansion. Supply count in Master Ray's favor. 
But again, it's mostly in Dragoons. That Observer going to wander up is going to see the five gateways, which is actually going to be a critical bit of information right at this stage. Master Ray not having a lot of information to know. Second Reaver out, so the Reaver plus these Dragoons should be able to defend the natural, so Nilsi should be able to hold here. And Master Ray with a second wave of Dragoons. This this honestly looks like an, a potentially overwhelming attack force once it's gathered up for Master Ray. 73 supply versus 65. Nilsi just getting his third and fourth gateway online. So, again, it, it's got to come down to that Reaver Micro, leaving the, the Reaver on the front, but kind of out... What is that? Looks like that's 10, 10 Dragoons versus a full control group plus Observer. Kind of Danger Town for Nilsi. He can't afford to lose troops at this stage. Master Ray continuing to funnel troops up and hold kind of that mid-high ground. And Reaver's a bit out of position to provide some support for Nilsi's troops. Nilsi backing up. Two Reavers are on the ground. They don't have shuttles to protect themselves. Master Ray diving in. One Reaver taking a lot of damage. And the, the rest of the Dragoons not providing a lot of protection. The funnel, kind of the concavity, working more to towards Master Ray's favor. Doing some initial damage on that Reaver. That Reaver just it looks like one or two hits away from being taken out. A Zealot moving up for support. And Master Ray continuing to apply pressure. Staying on top of his macro. Very tense mid-game here. Shuttle able to scoop up both Reavers to keep them alive. So Nilsi basically just is trying to survive, get his production up and running. He now has four gates and is adding a fifth and a sixth. So if he can just hold on for a little while, he'll be in not a terrible position as a follow-up. A couple Zealots being added on and a sixth gateway for Master Ray. So Master Ray playing Gateway Man. Which, again, puts even more pressure on Nilsi to really utilize and make those Reavers pay, uh, pay dividends for him. Two control groups, you can see, split across the middle. Some Zealots in between here. Nilsi backed up into his natural expansion. And honestly, just the engagement point of having kind of this large concave area to engage from. Potentially also an advantage for Master Ray. Six gateways kind of spread around for Nilsi. And both players kind of gathering up, waiting for yeah, troop counts to kind of filter in. So even production now for Nilsi overall. I like the two Dragoons there at home base for Master Ray, just in case a drop was sneaking through. Master Ray currently has map control. He's doing a good job macroing. Is sneaking ahead, but it's still really anyone's match. If things continue as they are, really what's going to happen here is Nilsi's going to end up contained by this attack force of Master Rays. And he's going to be boxed out of a third. He's moving up. Reaver's across the middle, dropping towards the front. The Reaver not getting target fired just yet. Second Reaver shot, unfortunately targeting the close unit, so not really being a big factor here. And you can see the, just the concavity of Dragoons moving in. One Reaver taken down, both Reavers taken down nice simultaneously. And an overwhelming Dragoon force now battering, and I think that might be GG, battering Nilsi's attack front. Just the concavity collapsing down. Some nice micro from Master Ray. And Nilsi just having to back off. The shuttle's still alive, but he doesn't have any Reavers. He's basically contained at this stage as long as Master Ray continues with this, and that's going to allow Master Ray to go ahead and grab his third once he established, and I think that might be what that probe is wandering out to do. Nilsi wandering up, trying to re-engage this before Master Ray is able to recap, and in fact, catches a couple Dragoons on the second wave to at least prevent that, at least force Ma Master Ray's troops out to the right instead of kind of full containment location. Master Ray being a little bit careful as he's trying to re-engage and again, reapply pressure. Now with a second wave of, of units pushing in, that pylon going to be down. And a, just nothing but Dragoons and a Reaver, but again, kind of in a boxed-in location. Master Ray moving back out. He does have a probe to go ahead and set up at that 12 o'clock location. Kind of thin moments. A lot of Zealots moving in. Citadel of a Dune warping in Zealot leg speed for Master Ray as well. And that could be, first of all, reinforcements become a lot faster, but secondarily, Zealots are going to easily be able to get in top of these Dragoons should Nilsi overcommit. He's producing a handful of Zealots himself. He has his own Citadel of a Doom, but no leg speed to speak of, getting a Forge up. His main starting to look a little bit thin, so as long as Master Ray can hold this contain, he will end up basically winning in pure economy. If he can establish a third before Nilsi's able to break out or kind of do any sort of counterattack damage, which has been the case 
through this part of the matchup. Two photon cannons warping in for Master Ray. Oops. At the natural expansion. <clears throat> Just in case the shuttle was able to sneak through. I think he's feeling that grip. Also sneaking out a couple probes just to make sure that Nilsi wasn't able to sneak out a, uh, any sort of ninja expansion to get back in this match. 135 supply lead for Master Ray. Two Reavers out, handful of Zealots. Those The thing is, is with Nilsi and those Reavers, Reavers really have been kind of a, a null factor. And now the question is, is Master Ray, yeah, has a lot of units to go ahead and, and stick that contain. Reinforcements coming across. His main basically mined out. Same thing happening on the opposite corner. But he's in a much better position to take a third. Also going to be able to clear out that pylon to that bottom right-hand corner. But it's kind of like, yeah, in taking that third, you got to risk losing that contain and kind of that counterattack breakout for Nilsi. Very... Very difficult situation for both players. Still think Master Ray has the overall advantage. And I'm waiting for that additional Nexus to be plopped down. Or for Nilsi to make a move. Nilsi moving up with his Zealots. Level 1, one and this is right as level 1 weapons is kicking in for Master Ray as well. That's unfortunate in the middle of this fight. Master Ray seeing them peek out. Diving in. There are Reavers here on the front. That will wipe out those Zealots fairly rapidly. But you can see the Zealots... From Master Ray getting on top of that Dragoon line across the south. The Reaver is getting picked off very rapidly as a follow-up. And now able to micro against these Zealots underneath. And yeah, kind of stutter step his way back. Nilsi able to get on top of that troop grouping to the left. But Master Ray still has reinforcements coming from the right. Somehow, two Zealots snuck across. But keep in mind, there's two cannons there. They're going to redirect to that 12 o'clock base while all of this is happening. But Nilsi losing the fight on the front door to that containment, and that's going to be GG. Realizing that 12 o'clock base is going to warp in. He wasn't able to break out of that contain and was going to end up starved out over the long term. So Nilsi, moving on to the loser's bracket. Unsurprisingly, Master Ray advancing to the winner's bracket. Just shows you his, I mean, yeah, just ha shows you why he was the Hasu League champion and reigning Hasu League champion uh, from last week. We will move on to the opposite side of the bracket, which is going to be a really great matchup of Dreamer versus Crane.